Hello, and welcome to another video about the Brentum Scheduler. In this video, I want to show you how to customize the event editor without using some JavaScript component framework. But first of all, what is the event editor? Well, this is the menu that appears whenever you double click on an event, or when you right click on an event and choose Edit Event. By default, it has the fields that you see here in front of you. It has a name, a resource field, and start, and end date and times. Okay, so how all can we customize this? Well, of course, you could disable it entirely. You would do that by setting the features.eventedit setting in your scheduler config to false. Sure enough, double clicking on an event now does nothing and right-clicking the event, we see that the context menu no longer contains the edit event menu item. Cool. Just like all the items in these scheduler's context menus, the widgets and buttons in the event editor can also be customized, added, or removed. So by default, the editor comes with the widgets and buttons described in this documentation here under Guides, Customization, and Customize Event Editor. If you scroll down the page just a little bit, you can see this list of the default child widgets. You've got the name field, the resource field, start date field, these fields that you saw in the actual app a moment ago. But you also see the default buttons that show up at the bottom of the editor. That is the save button, delete button, and the cancel button. Let's try removing the delete button. Now, instead of passing a Boolean to my event edit option, I'll pass an object instead. I will target the bottom bar with the bbar property. And then we'll say under the items, set the delete button to false. Awesome. Back in the app now, I can open up the event editor, but the delete button is gone from the bottom bar. We could also remove widgets by setting their values to null. So directly inside of event edit, we'll target the items. And then back over in the documentation, let's see which one we want to get rid of. How about name field and resource field? Perfect. Now those are missing from the editor. Sometimes, instead of removing a widget, it really makes more sense to customize some of its properties. You could do this by targeting the widget name, just like the name field we already have here, and instead of providing null, we'll provide an object value with the properties that we want to override. For instance, we could customize the label, changing name to title, or we could change the weight, which moves the position of the widget in the editor. Let's put the resource field to the very top. Awesome. Now our resource field exists at the top, and name has been relabeled as title. Depending on what kind of field the widget displays, you might be curious what all different properties we can customize on these different fields. Well, depending on the type of field that it is, you could view these various properties in the API documentation. That's found under API Docs, Core, widget, and all of the different field types are listed here. Some of the popular ones are text field, number field, and date field. Finally, this widget class here can also be a helpful reference when it comes to customizing these different fields. Great. Now, besides configuring existing fields, sometimes you need a whole new widget that isn't provided by the scheduler out of the box. Perhaps you'd like to provide a way to add notes to each event. We can do this much like customizing an existing field. This time, though, instead of targeting a key that already exists, we'll just make up a new one. I'll call it note field, since that makes sense. Then we should specify what type the field is. A note should probably be a text area. We'll give it an intuitive label, notes. And then finally, we'll give it a name. This is the name of the field in the event record that we should read and write the data to. I'll call it lowercase notes. 
Now with that available, we do need to make sure that our event model actually has this field in order for uh, this widget to link up with it properly. Our data for the different events come from this dummy data.json file. Notice that I have added this in to each of the different events. Although it looks like I said note instead of notes, let's select all of those and change that to notes. Awesome. That's important because this must match this right here. Sure enough, back in the editor now, we do have our notes field within the event editor. Finally, if you need to customize which widgets display dynamically per event, you can use the on before event edit show listener. This gives you access to the editor instance where you can target and modify properties of specific widgets. And you also have access to the actual event record so that you can check the current event data and then customize your widgets accordingly. For instance, I could show the notes field for all of the events except those with the name of right click me. To do that, I must first grab the field from the widget map. And then we'll say that the note field should be hidden if the event record name is right click me. That's the name of one of our events that we had over in the browser. Whoops, this should be an equal sign here. Now, when I open up the event editor for the right click me event, it does not include the notes field. But if I double click on any of the other events, sure enough, they still include notes. In conclusion, the event editor comes with sensible defaults and is simple to customize while still being flexible enough to fit your exact needs. Now you've got the power to customize the event editor in your own apps.